Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to House of Hell. So, things could be going better, guys. We have 9 out of 19 stamina left. Obviously, we are not good at fighting. Uh, we gather two fear points, one from seeing the ghostly bride and another by getting attacked by an invisible enemy. But our skill's still alright, our luck is still at full, uh, we don't have any weapons, and we have found no useful items, so that is not good. So this is going about as I expected it would be, but let's go ahead and continue on. You consider your best plan as you walk down the passageway. You turn right along the landing and two doors are on your left. The first has Azazel written on its nameplate, and the second, Mephisto. Do you want to try either of these rooms? Um, well, we could try either of these rooms, or we can pass both these rooms and walk along to where the landing turns right. To tell you guys the truth, I think out of these two, I would go with the Azazel room. Just because I've read enough Marvel comics to know there is nothing good going on with Mephisto in any way, shape, or form. So, let's go ahead and try the Azazel room. Looks like a lab. The door opens and you peer into the room. You quickly check that there's no one inside and are relieved to find it's empty, but full of clutter. It seems to be a crude scientific laboratory of some sort. A brass telescope points through the window towards the sky. Charts and mathematical tables are pinned to the walls. A human skeleton hangs from a hook, and a bench is covered with glass vials and apparatus. They look like priceless antiques, and they are all probably made in the last century. Do we wish to investigate the room further, or prefer to leave the room? Um, let's go ahead and investigate and see what we can find. You step into the room and close the door behind you. A squeaking noise from one corner makes you jump, but when you walk over you're relieved to find that the squeaking comes from three rats in a cage. You keep your ears peeled for sounds of visitors as you investigate the contents of the room. So we can wish to look through the drawers, examine the liquids and glass vials, or look through the cupboards. Hmm. Well, let's uh let's take a look at the liquids and glass vials. That never turns bad. At the end of the bench is a rack which holds four glass vials, and each vial contains a colored liquid. They look like the results of someone's experiment. Are you willing to risk taking a sip of one of these liquids? If so, which color will you choose? Green, red, clear, or yellow? If this seems a little too dangerous, you may instead look through the drawers by turning to 81, or look through the cupboards. Hmm. Let's see, let's go ahead and uh, bookmark this. Green, red, clear, or yellow? I don't really want to drink yellow, because knowing our luck, that's going to be like werewolf pee. Let's try... green. You take the stopper off the vial and sniff the liquid. It's odorless. Raising the neck to your lips, you take a sip and wait for something to happen, but nothing does. You feel no strange effects at all. Suddenly your ears prick at the sound of footsteps coming closer. You nip into the shadows and wait. The footsteps stopped outside the door, and you can hear two voices talking. Hadn't we better ask the master's permission? One asks. Hmm. Maybe you're right. We better get a light for the lamps. You breathe a sigh of relief as the footsteps disappear off in the direction from which you approach the room. You decide it's best to leave before they return, and you open the door onto the landing. The safest way to go, it strikes you, is away from the two visitors, which may return at any moment. If you approach this room from the left, turn to 229. If you approach it from the right, turn to 26. I don't remember which way... Which way we approached from. Uh, well, I'm glad that that green potion didn't do anything to me. I guess it might have been Frankenstein's Mountain Dew. Let's go ahead and go right, because left turns and me don't get along. There's another door a couple of meters up to the landing on the left. The door. This is the door to the Mephisto room. If you wish to enter, turn to 298. Otherwise, you may pass it and head towards two doors in the corner of the landing. I, uh, I still don't want to go through the Mephisto room. Let's go ahead and head towards the two doors. If this is bad, we can just come back to this. So. You walk up. The two, to the two doors in the corner of the balcony. The one on your left is named Balthus, and the one on the front of you has no name. 
If you wish to enter the Balthus room, turn to 299. If you go through the other door, turn to 86. If you choose to ignore these two doors and continue around the landing, turn to 193. Not sure about Balthus. Um, let's try the door with no name because I think these might be like people's rooms. We have like Mephisto and Azazel and Balthus. Let's try the... Let's try this. It's probably going to be like a broom closet. The door opens into a narrow passageway with ends at a window. There's a door halfway along the left-hand side and a sign on the door identifies it as the... Diabolus room. Ooh. If you wish to try this door, turn to page 13. Uh-huh. If you wish to investigate the window instead, turn to 110. If you're not keen to do either and prefer to go back through the door and continue along the landing, turn to 193. I'm going to avoid the named doors for right now, since that Azazel room didn't really do much for us. And we're trying to get out of here, so... Let's try to go through the window. Curtains are drawn across the window, and you approach cautiously. You gingerly pat the folds in the curtain and are relieved to find nothing there. Although they seem to be safe, you're still on your guard as you draw them apart. As you do, a thunderous clap booms outside and makes you jump. You're safe. A perfectly ordinary window is uncovered. However, the heavy iron bars on the outside are a little worrying. Crap. Through the window, you can see nothing but the rain running down the pane of glass, but curiously, the rain is avoiding one area. Could it be that the wind is blowing the rain away from this one corner? You bend down to take a closer look. Written in the condensation which is formed on the glass is a message. You read three words, Mordana in Abaddon. You repeat this message to yourself and then rub it off the window in case anyone else should see it. This message may be useful to you, and you will realize when it is. Oh, that's cool. Now you must head back to the landing and turn left. A short distance further, you come to the top of the main staircase which leads downwards. Immediately opposite the staircase is an unmarked door. Um, Go downstairs, wish the unmarked door, continue around the landing. Unmarked doors seem to be paying dividends for us, so let's go through that. You step into a small storeroom and close the door behind you. There are shelves on the left and right walls which, on which various household objects are stored. In front of you, in the wall facing the door, is another door. Will you search through the things on the shelves, try the door opposite? Hmm. You know what? Let's go ahead and search through the shelves. I think I bookmarked. Various items of crockery, cutlery, and food are kept in the storeroom, including a sharp meat knife which you hide under your coat to use as a weapon in the future. Hallelujah! The sharp knife adds three skill points in a fight. On one shelf you find several cloves of garlic which you also take, and there's an unlabeled bottle of white liquid on another shelf. Hmm. Um... Wish to drink the liquid turned to 362. Let's let us let us see what happens. Big Bucks no ooh. You taste the liquid. It is white wine. You drink some more and it warms you. You start to feel a little lightheaded and dizzy, then suddenly you feel a stab of pain in your stomach and you double over. But there's no relief from this pain because you've drank poisoned wine. That's a perfect thing to have in a storage cabinet. In a few moments, you'll lose consciousness, and in five minutes, you'll be dead. You'll never make tomorrow's appointment after all. That is the least of my worries. So, that was our first death. Let's head back here. We know to avoid white, white wine. I'm a red wine guy myself. Ignore the liquid and try the door at the back of the storeroom. 255. Yeah, let's go ahead and try that. You step out of the storeroom into a hallway. To your left, the hallway ends at a door which leads into the... Uh... Shatayin room. Almost opposite is the Mammon room, which you may enter... I don't want to go into any of the named rooms. Um... Can't... Yeah. Let's, let's avoid this for right now. Let's go back to the landing through the storeroom. A few steps past the unmarked door is another unmarked door. Sure. Why not? Oh, crap. 
Um, that's not good. You open the door cautiously at first, but all you can see is darkness, and you swing it wide open. Ah! You scream out loud as a body tumbles forward on top of you. The body is that of an old man, and judging by the expression on his face, his death was not a pleasant one. You gain three fear points. Well, that's not good. The landing turns right and a passage branches off. You may either turn left down the passageway and past a couple of doors before turning left again. Um... Let's turn right and follow the landing. That is not good. We have five fear points. You follow the landing round, past a wooden door, but bears the name Tudelvilas. You may try this door. Straight ahead, the landing ends at a paneled wall and the passageway turns to the left. Um, let's go ahead and take the passageway. You follow the passageway round the corner to the left. Two doors face each other across the passage, and you may either try the door on the left to the Belial room, or the door to the right to the Abaddon room. These are all names of demons, by the way. Straight ahead, the passageway continues for a few meters before ending in an unmarked door. Eh, unmarked door it is. We're, I'm sensing a theme today. You open the door slowly and carefully. The room you enter is a bedroom, which looks as though it's been waiting for someone to come in and go to bed. Uh oh The sheets are folded back. The fire in the fireplace is warm but dying. On the bedside table, a candle is burning next to it on a silver tray with a bedtime snack on it. Velvet curtains are pulled across the window, and along the left-hand wall are fitted cupboards. The overall picture is quite cozy. Hmm... Check the cupboards. Let's investigate the bedside table. On the bedside table are a candle which lights the room and a silver tray. On a silver tray is a nighttime snack of bread, jam, and tea. Yeah, why not? We'll see how this kills me. You examine the tray carefully, but there seems to be nothing suspicious about it. The snack is just what you needed. Your stamina increased by four points, and your luck increases by a point for this find. Holy crap! Something, uh... 13 out of 9, 5 out of 13. Well, that's okay, I guess. When you're ready, you may either leave the room or investigate the cupboards. I don't want to press my luck. Let's go ahead and leave the room. A few steps further back down the passageway, two doors face each other. Um, continue around the passageway and walk downstairs. Left is the Abaddon room, right is the Belial room. Hmm. Uh... I don't want to walk downstairs, though, is the thing. I, I want to keep that... Alright, we got the Belial room and the Abaddon room. Uh, actually, you know what? Check this out. We're going to do some gaming here. In my uh, drawer here, I have a D20. And I don't know if you guys can hear me actually rolling it, but I will say evens the Belial room and odds the Abaddon room. And if I roll a 1 or a 20, we will uh, go around the passageway. So... And odd it is. So that would be the Abaddon room. Let's try here. Uh-oh. You enter a bedroom which is lit by a single candle bur burning by the bedside. A heavy, musty odor hangs in the air which could come from all the plants which are standing in pots on the mantelpiece. Bedside table, dressers, and shelves. Whoever used this room certainly liked plants. But another sight catches your attention and stops you in your tracks. Asleep on the bed is an old woman. It seems she has not heard you, for she's not moved since you entered the room. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Old women in horror books and horror movies are never a good decision. Let's go ahead and... Let's wake her. Why not? Uh... You step over to the bed and shake the old woman gently, but as soon as you touch her withered skin, you jump back in horror. She's stone cold. Dead. You gain two fear points for the shock. Ooh, that is... Um, as you stand by the bed, shivering, a low moan comes from the body. Its eyelids flick open and pure white eyes stare up at the ceiling. She has no pupils. 
Okay. Um. Sure. Let's wait and see what'll happen next. Kind of reckless today. You hear words coming from the old woman, yet her lips do not move. Stranger, how dare you invade the private bedchamber of the woman of the house, she asks. Oh, Lord. You stammer an apologetic reply. She orders you, be gone, intruder. Leave an old woman to die in peace. Oh? You leave her as she wish wishes, or ask her for information about the house. Sure. What business of yours is this house, she screams. If you will not go on your own accord, then my hounds will see you off. And if they cannot, I will do so myself. With these words, a wooden panel slides open in the wall, and two huge Great Danes spring out and attack. Uh-oh. I'm really glad I have that knife now. And we must fight. We have 13 stem. That was a good roll. We got a lot of skill compared to the, uh, because of that knife that we're rocking. Alright, one Great Dane is down. Oh, oh, I, well. Okay, slamming the table was good right there, because he rolled boxcars. There we go, that's slamming the table like I thought we need to do. That was a flawless fight. Um, if you defeat the dogs, will you remain to search it? Oh, the room. Let's bookmark this because I am not sure. Probably that woman's going to try and kill us, but... You search the room while the old woman threatens you from her bed. You recognize some of the plants, and the, old, the woman's voice grows frantic as you poke around in an herb garden by the window. A thought dawns on you and you turn to her, threatening to destroy her plants unless she's able to give you the information you require. Savage. She shrieks at the thought of you harming her plants and agrees. When will you ask her? Um... Hmm... About to find the man in gray secret rooms, tonight's festivities? Uh, these are... These seem to be closed off. Let's go for the one that's green. Oh wait, those aren't even allowed to us, I don't think. Before I will answer your question, she says, you must tell me something. What is my name? Do you know what her name is? If so, turn to eight. Is this the name that we learned on the window? Remembering the message in the window, you say, Mordana. She curses. Damn you, stranger, she hisses. All right, then. I'll answer your questions. Okay, secret rooms in the house. Secret room, she laughs. Why, this house is riddled with secret passageways and secret rooms. Most are in the cellar, though, but some of the upstairs passages lead to them. The most cunning secret room is the master's most trusted hiding place. It can only be reached by one way, and that is from under the stairs in the cellar. A password is needed, and I knew the old, I knew the old one, but it's recently been changed. Shaku will know the new password. The women's eyes close, as if the conversation has been a great strain. You leave her be and consider the information you've been given. Having explored most of the rooms upstairs, you decide to risk searching the ground floor. Oh crap, we can't we can't even try out those named doors now. You follow the landing back round to the staircase and creep downstairs. Okay. You walk down the stairs cautiously, looking in every direction, and there's no one about. Great. Walk up to the front door and open it. That is an appetite for or that is a recipe for unpleasantness. Left turn or right turn, guys? Ah, uh, left turn. Why not? Let's head to my inevitable demise. The door opens into a large but cozy drawing room. The dying embers of a warm fire burn in the hearth. Comfortable chairs are arranged around the fireplace. Two glasses and a decanter stand on a glass top table between two chairs. There are plants and in tall stands on either side of the windows, but there's another door next to the one you came in. Explore the room further, leave through the other door, have a little tipple from the decanter. I don't know, uh, drinking has, hasn't really served us well. 
but let's see what happens. You pour a measure of the deep brown liquid onto one of the glasses and hold it up. It looks safe enough, and so you take a sip. Delicious. The brandy warms you inside as it slips down and you gain three stamina points. Huzzah! You spy a, a hip flask on a shelf in one corner and you take some of the brandy with you. Okay, look around the room. Do you wish to examine the corner shelf where you found the hip flask? Examine the fireplace and mantelpiece or just leave the drawing room? Um, let's go... Let's try the fireplace first. And, yeah. A fine carriage clock sits in the center of an elaborately carved wooden mantelpiece. A number of letters are jammed in behind the clock and you reach for them. As you do so, your sleeve catches one of the carved images in the woodwork and it moves. You lean forward to examine it, and it's a small carved demonic face which can be moved sideways. Ah. That's kind of the reason I wanted to go to the fireplace, because that's normally always where the secret passage is. <laughs> Put the candle back! Read through the letters. Well, we're trying to find a password, aren't we? Let's re read through the letters. The letters are not particularly interesting, except for one from a foreign address, written in immaculate handwriting with a broad-nibbed back- or, yeah, broad-nibbed black pen. It's addressed to the Earl of Drummer and appears to warn him of possible dangers. It starts by describing a raid of some sort on the writer's house and how he narrowly escaped being caught. He ends with a PS which says, I also suggest you further protect yourself by changing the password on your own cash room. I for one know it is Goathead. How many others know the same? Why not change it to something which will remind you of the sound advice of a good friend? The letter is signed by Count Pravimi. You read this through again and replace the letter. I, we might need to remember this because this could be important. Do you wish to leave the room? No, we're going to try the mantelpiece. Oh, crap. The little carving moves to reveal a button set in the mantelpiece behind it. You consider whether or not to press the button. As you're deep in thought, you do not notice what's happening to the fire. In the grate, the fire has come back to life. Strong flames are licking the chimney and considerable heat is being given off. You feel the heat and step backwards. As you do so, two small figures leap from the fire and face you. These fire sprites are small and come up to your knees, but their flaming body burn with the vigor of the fire in which they arose. They hover in the air just above the carpet, for if they touch anything, it burst into flames. Oh, okay. Do we wish to fight these creatures? I don't want to fight them. Let's try another approach first, because... The knife isn't going to do anything to them, I don't think. How will you hold off these advancing creatures? Will you pick up, pick up the brandy decanter or move slowly backwards toward the window? I'm not going to throw alcohol on fire sprites. Let's try the window because it is raining outside. That could douse them off, I assume. Logic. Use a pot plant in a clever way. <laughs> the fire sprites follow you as you back towards the window. Pretending to be terrified, you make for one of the pot plant stands and attempt to hide behind it. But when the sprites are near enough, you strike. Grabbing the large plant pot on top of the stand, you hurl the contents over the little creatures. The soil covers them and douses their flames, and in an instant, they've disappeared. Well, that that wasn't what I was what I was planning on, but I'll take it. Alright, you step back up to the fireplace and examine the secret button. Will we press the secret button or leave the drawing room? I don't know, guys, but we will find out in the next episode. Um, we're doing okay. Fear is 7 out of 13. I'm not happy about that, but we do have some brandy that's going to give us some heal, and we're at 16 out of 19, and we have a knife. So, some bad stuff and some good stuff. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. I will see you next time. Later days, everyone.